Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and I'm here for a stitching update. And it's been a little more, like two and a half weeks, uh, two and two thirds, um, longer than I anticipated, but it's been busy. And a big part of it was those um, rugs I showed you last time that I was stitching for my son's class. I had about 70 um, of them to do, and they're finally done. <laughs> <laughs> so my, I can have my life back now. But in the mix of having to work on those, and I'd kind of paced myself to do four every day to get them done before spring break, um, The I had like two custom patterns requested on Etsy, plus some kits I needed to make and, and send off for my Etsy shop. So it felt like everything was just kind of all happening all at once. And so I was really didn't have a lot to show so when the beginning of this week rolled around and I'm supposed to do a two-week update video um, I wasn't really feeling it I wasn't quite done with the rugs yet and not really at a happy stopping point on the project I was working on so I just waited and then I figured let's just wait till Friday I had errands I needed to run on Wednesday so here we are <laughs> so some of the time some days in the past month um, I didn't get any stitching time during the day. It was only during the school pickup line. I'd get a little bit of time on my travel piece. Um, oh, speaking of that. Oh, wait, I remembered I did get t some some work done on my first travel piece um, since you saw me last. So I got, had to go run and grab that. Um, <clears throat> normally I keep all my stitchy s stuff in like a box behind this chair um, except for my travel pieces, and they're, like, across the room, closer to where I keep my purse. So, every once in a while, I'll be sharing stuff with you and be like, oh, it's in my other section, you know. And then, of course, I have, um, our, like, study computer room slash craft room is, uh, like, where I keep my stash and stuff. So, sometimes stuff gets, I forget to pull it out from in there, too. So, anyways... So, let's just get started, and hopefully it won't be a total mess of a video. Um, I kind of fell off the bandwagon for taking notes as well, so I have notes for like the first maybe week or half a week since I since my last video, and then I just didn't. Didn't write anything down, so hopefully I could just remember what, what happened and what my thoughts were, what I worked on. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. So... First off, right after my last video, I was really, really close to finishing my greetings from the park, um, stitch along with the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, and sure enough, that afternoon in the valet line, I got like this close to finishing, and I literally, after I came home with my kids, they'd all gone inside. I was sitting in the garage with the last couple stitches, because <laughs> I'm like, I will finish this today. I was like two or three stitches away from finishing it, so... Okay, I have it here. Um, so I finished it that same day. I uploaded the video, um, but I'd already recorded and, you know, I wasn't going to go back and add anything to the last video. So this is what it looked like last time you saw it. And here it is now, all finished. So I think it turned out pretty cute. It is not framed. Um, because I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. We're currently in the process of sort of, kind of, sort of remodeling our TV room. Um, a year ago, like a year and a half ago now maybe, we remodeled our kitchen because there was a water leak in our hallway that messed up our tile, so we figured we're going to retile the whole downstairs. We might as well redo the kitchen because that was kind of a bucket list eventually thing so we did the kitchen and the tile uh, like a year and a half ago and then about six months ago we got a new dining room table so it was kind of that whole section of our house was slowly kind of matching <laughs> and then our tv room area is right next to the dining room so it kind of we felt like that was a good place to do our next put our efforts in next so the other piece I made from the Frosted Pumpkin is in the TV room because I my husband had already had a 
Yellowstone poster up in there, so we figured, I figured, national park stuff had to go together. So I don't know what it's going to end up looking like in there and where we will want to put art and if this will go in there still or if it'll be put somewhere else because if it's not in that room, I may want to frame it on like a canvas or something instead of behind glass. So we'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's almost exactly as charted except for you can, the band, the borders, um, I changed from supposed to be this dark, dark teal color was this top one. And then the light pink was this one. And I changed it to general arts dungarees and general arts rhubarb. And same with these two down here. And then this color in the sunset was supposed to be this orange and it seemed too too striking of a change for me so I blended pink and orange together to make like more of a faded sunset look to that and I think that is the only change I made although I think I gave this person eyelashes and they didn't normally have eyelashes because it looked a little bit too much like a girl <laughs> to me. The way the hair was a little bit curly. So I think those are the only changes I made. Otherwise, it's as charted. This is 18 count beige Ada that I got on clearance at Joann's last year. And I think it turned out pretty cute. Um, So that was the first thing I did right after my last video. And then I went to work on... <clears throat> my story time sampler, which I think I was in the middle of, and I got that done. And as I think you, I think I was telling you that I didn't have, I keep feeling like a hair down here. Oh, here's one. Maybe that's the culprit. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure I'd be able to get this section done um, in the time in the five day rotation that I had planned because there was a few days that I didn't get any stitching. And sure enough, I needed six days on this. So I went into the sixth day and even then just barely got it done on the sixth day. This is what it looks like all together. And I'm doing this, my own personal stitch along one little thing every month. This was originally a mystery stitch along, I think in like 2015. Um, but I didn't know about the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery then and I'm doing it now. So I did, Sherlock Holmes for March, and he is adorable. So this is what it looked like when you saw it last. <clears throat> and here it is now. Let's see if I can, that's better. So Sherlock Holmes turned out pretty cute. I like how like muted and manly the colors are in this one compared to these, you know, a lot brighter pastel-y colors. Um, he's got a more greenish frame and fun little fireplace. I thought that was cute. And a little teapot and his magnifier. <clears throat> so he turned out really cute. So, and I got just a tiny bit done on the border. I think I, I had a string on the border. I may have finished that one already when you saw it. So a string of the letters that I finished. So here's this. And so at the beginning of April, in a couple weeks, I will be working on The Wizard of Oz, which is going to be a fun one, I think. It's very another colorful one. Um, so I'm still really liking this. This is super cute. Um, Shelly Key X Stitch is working on this this year also. And I may have enabled um, Little Stitch Girl Designs. Oh, I forget your name. Your mom's name is Jamie. I'm really sorry. I will put it. <laughs> I will put it down on the on the on the screen. Um, she was saying that she might be tempted to buy this too and work on this. So if you do, I'd be really excited. No pressure. <laughs> I know we all have so many things that we want to stitch, and I am personally constantly finding new things I want to stitch, and I already have like. I have put together like a stupidly strict rotation and and then I keep finding new things I want to stitch so I'm just a hopeless mess but 
Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner told me in a, in a comment recently that <clears throat> breaking your plans is just an excuse to make new plans because planning is half the fun, right? So I loved that. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in my back pocket because I broke some plans this month. So you will see what that is. Um, let's go ahead and do some haul now um, because the next thing I have written down is that I've received some Monaco in the in the mail. I had gone on um, eBay and checked a couple sellers that I bought from previously. There's there's one seller that I bought a yard of rose, 28 count Monaco, a um, couple years ago. And another seller where I bought three cuts of, like three fat quarters of linen for my Mirabilia's. And the Monaco has since been chopped up and most of it is in use in full coverage pieces. Um, but I thought, well, I'm going to go check those two sellers to see if they have anything right now that I'm interested in because, you know, you never know. I, I've got an, a few new patterns in the past, you know, several months. So there's always a need for no more fabric. And the one that had sold the Monaco previously had another color of Monaco that seemed worthwhile to me. And it was... Um, Dove Gray Monaco. So it's uh, a little bit bluer than you're seeing, but it's 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 a nice light gray. And um, this is a yard, so this is like an enormous piece. I can't open it up because, <laughs> but see how thick it is. It's like so. This is a full yard of um, Dove Gray Monaco, twenty-eight count. And I don't have any plans for it. I am Shelly Key X Stitch recently in her last video that I saw, she recently got the I think Country Cottage Needleworks monthly series. They're not all cottages. They have some houses and some other little characters, which I liked because I'm not like a huge house person. And I already have these months that I did. But I, there's so many cute month series, and that one had kind of caught my eye a while back. And when she showed it, I was like, oh, you keep showing stuff that I like. <laughs> so she's like, well, how about we share the patterns, and then she can give them all away um, from her channel once both of us are done stitching them. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I think I want to take you up on that. And I may put these like on my nightstand or something, just so it's separate from these, because I'm considering doing those um, little months on the light gray. My one, one over one. My one concern would be maybe if the white wouldn't show up very well. I don't know how much white is in those patterns. So we'll have to look at that and see if that'll work. Cause I have a boatload of this with only one Haid that I'm planning to start in May that I think I'll probably use, I'll use this for too. Um, so I might as well. I might as well. So I may, I may be using this for those months coming up here in a little bit, which may end up being just travel pieces because I've discovered with a impromptu new start that I had that the kind of more primitive blocky style that I don't normally stitch is actually really nice for the car because you can get a lot of stitches in and see progress quickly with when you have just a short chunk of time like that. So that would be kind of a fun thing to do in the car. And then as a bonus, she sent me a little cut of navy Ada. It, it looks like 18 count Ada, which will definitely come in handy. So there's my boatload, <laughs> boatload of uh, Monaco and then a little a bonus cut of Ada. So that was really nice. Um, that was my eBay purchase. And then last time I showed you that I had... Um, subscribed to the Victorian Motto Sampler Club and got my first shipment of that at the beginning of March. So it comes in the bag and whoops, super fun to finally be part of a floss club. And this one was just really appealed to me with the, the deal and the quality. Um, they're gorgeous threads, but you also get a, lo a lot of them. So that definitely appealed to me. So here's them all together 
from the, the March shipment, and you've probably all seen these already. Um, my first glance at these was a little bit underwhelming because I didn't necessarily like the colors together, but as I looked at them separately, um, they're really pretty. And I may not do something with them together because that's just not my color scheme that I like, but I'll definitely use them separately. So here's Coastal Seaweed, which has a lot of vari variation, which is really nice. The ones with heavier variation, um, I like a lot because it seems like it's more worth it um, than just looking like something that would be like DMC. It's where it's really solid because then like what's kind of the point? Because DMC is fine. So I like the ones that have a little bit of more variegation. This one is Shades of Coral, which also has a good amount of variation on it. Blarney Green, which is really pretty. This one has a DMC conversion, but you can see a little bit of variation in, in the thread itself. And this one also has a DMC conversion. This is Tropical Wonder. It's a little greener than you're seeing. It looks more teal in the video, but that's pretty. And then Tahitian Floral is a, is a nice light pink. It's pretty good. And again, a few of these had tropi had DMC conversions, but not... Um, but they still have have enough variegation that I'm I'm happy with them and, and might use them. This is Old Salem Spell, which apparently <laughs> has blown up on the internet. Everyone loves this one. I like it. I'm actually already, if you notice, this chunk is a little bit thinner than the other one. And I, I received the correct amount. But I have already used it in a pattern. And so what I'm planning to do with these Victorian mottos, because there's 20 yards on each card, um, I'm a bobbin girl, so I'm planning to bobbinate them. Only I'm gonna do half and like two bobbins per per card, um, 10 on each. And a, a DMC skein is 8.7, so it wasn't that much more. Um, so what I am doing is this is my old Salem spell on a bobbin. Half of it on the bobbin, half of it still here, because I wanted to show you you know, all together with all of these before I bobbinated the whole lot. <clears throat> Believe me, that was really hard. I'm like, should I just film a clip showing you my floss so that I can start bobbinating these? Because I really want to get them on bobbins and get my little... I'm going to probably start with a full, full-size full floss box and just start filling it up. Um, I'll do them alphabetically. So I put the title of the color and this stands for Victorian Model Sampler Shop. And down here, I'm going to put the DMC conversion if there is one. And this is how I label my um, regular floss, too. So I'll show you. This is a DMC from my stash, and a lot of them are either written or they have those little stickers here, and it says DMC. And then this is like a color in cotton where it has the color where I can... They're all on the same side, so I can organize them by this. But then I have keep the other information over here. So when I'm... Um, when I have something with a conversion that has a conversion, I'll go pull the DMC and write on the bottom of that DMC Victorian motto, you know, in whatever color it is so that I can, like, I think Michelle Bendy Stitchy was going to do that too, so that you, you can know when you go to pull a color for a pattern, like, oh, I could use a Victorian motto for this. Um, so that's that. I was really excited to get that. And you should, if you like Victorian Motto or you're thinking about trying them, you should go check out um, Julie, <clears throat> Gulf Coast Stitcher. I just found her channel um, like a week or two ago, and I'm glad I did, and that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> but go check her out. And I kind of jumped in to the opportunity she presented, which you won't get to see the product from me until um, June, but I'm excited about that. So if you're very curious, go check out Julie at, um, she's called Gulf Coast Stitcher here on FlossTube. So I also received my needle minders from No Name Needle Minders. It was my first, first time um, ordering from them. I won a gift certificate because of 
some posts that I had done in the Full Coverage Fanatics group, and I guess they're, they're drawing monthly for winners for that. So, <clears throat> I think, I have one more. I think it's on one of my other projects, so I'll be sure to show it. But these are the needle minders that I got from them. I ordered five that were this little tiny, this is like the Countess size, the smallest one they have, and it's smaller than an inch. Yeah, they're like three-fourths by five-eighths, so they're tiny. And this was the pretty freebie that she threw in there. And it's bigger, but it's lightweight, so I'm totally okay with that. Because um, I wanted some that were lightweight, so that since I stitch in hand, I don't, didn't want them to like drag down my fabric too much. So I ordered this one with roses and a butterfly, and this other one has some uh, some flowers on it too. I'll show you on my other project. And this, I found, had some music notes on it, which was really fun. I like music. And then those were the four I was going to get. And then she posted, like, a couple days later some new sheets, and there was some kitties. <laughs> so I saw one, and I because I'd been looking for those, and I couldn't find any cat ones she had that I liked. So can I add a kitty to my order before you <laughs> make them? She's like, sure. So that's what I got from her. That was really fun. And and then I got my first sprinkle of stitchy kindness from Bendy Stitchy. Michelle, she sent me, um, or she had shown on her video something and mentioned, oh, and she was showing it and I was like, oh, that's really pretty. And then she said that it reminded me, reminded her of me. So it was meant to be, it was fate. So this is flowers within a flower that she found in a magazine and sent that off to me which is really fun and I was looking at the pattern and it's intense it's a not very big pattern it's really small actually but there's like two charts lots of layers of their stitching and fractionals and back stitching and pin stitch which I guess you stitch over top of everything else and there's um I forgot where oh yeah so there's straight stitches, back stitches, pin stitches, French knots, and beads atop full and fractional stitches. So it's going to be like Chatelaine level of <laughs> um, in, of uh, complications. So that'll be kind of interesting to start. Um, I don't know when. This is on Charles Craft Irish Linen, which is still found in the craft store. So I'll just totally do that and have it look exactly like that. So, thank you, Michelle. That was perfect for me. Um, I bought some more stuff this week. I've been a bad girl, but I will show you that when I get, get it and explain it all later. Um, and then I think we can go back to what I worked on this month. So, uh, after Storytime Sampler, I went onto a stitching shelf because this was my piece for Full Coverage Fanatics Winter for the very end of the winter solstice area because it had this line of distinctly winter pictures. I'm still up in the corner, but this is the only pattern I had that had like an actual winter section. So I worked on that and this was... I... I'm happy for where I got, um, but I'm kind of sad I didn't get more time on it. Um, but it's it's okay. It is what it is. I finished a column, which for this pattern is like a huge milestone because of the amount of confetti. And this was a year of whips piece to try to finish this first page. And I originally had it plugged in for four weeks this month. And I've knocked that all down just to this month, this week that I had worked on it in March because... I'm going to try to fit in every full coverage piece I have this year rather than more on fewer of them, which I talked about last time. So at least I'm happy I got another column done. Um, and I'm really jealous because Ann P finished page one. <laughs> she has started to work on this. I think she started it maybe in max colors and then switched to regular colors. Um, so she's cheating. <laughs> no, totally, totally kidding. 
Um, mine is still max colors, and there are sections where it's very, very thick because of that, but um, it's still pretty, and I like how it turned out. So this is where it was last time you saw it, <clears throat> and this is where it is now. Um, it is two over one half stitch on 28 count tea dyed Monaco, and this column is what I did. And there was actually a good amount of solid color in this one because of all that dark stitching. Um, so that actually made it go a little bit quicker, which was nice because um, didn't have a lot of time. So I'm glad that I got and this. This part is supposed to be the top of the key. Doesn't look a whole lot like a key, a key right now. So I'm hoping it'll kind of look more like a key once I get more of it done. Trying not to get that light. Yeah, that's good down there. Um, again, another thing that kind of put me off on this one was how long this is, and having to prop it up on my on the arm of my chair while I'm stitching works okay. But then I can't really bring it into the TV room to walk, to work on during during the evening because it's kind of too big and so there's different times when I just would rather bring a smaller piece with me to work on so this one and my other one I worked on this month are a full yard in width and so that kind of is a deterrent sometimes but something else somebody commented on this that mine looked really smooth and theirs was bumpy and I want to share with you that mine is bumpy too um I don't know if it's if you can really, if you'll be able to see it, you just have to, you can feel it. It's kind of bumpy. It's super thick where these flowers are. Um, this is a lot smoother, but like, you might just need to feel it in person. It's very thick. It's very, um, and it is occasionally bumpy. <clears throat> so mine is not perfect. This is what the back looks like. It's super, super, super dense in, in these flower areas. Um, so this is 28 count, two over one half stitch. Um, if you are doing a full coverage that's got lots of confetti, like one of these bookshelves or uh, a Josephine wall or something of that nature, you may want to consider 25 count. Um, the thing I liked about 28 is this dark stitching that is not confetti heavy looks really good on 28 count whereas it would look a little bit see-through on 25 count I would think because I have another piece with dark stitching on 25 count and you can see through a little bit so it is nice in that respect but then you got to deal with the confetti in the other sections so it's kind of a trade-off I think it doesn't really matter that it's thick and a little bit bumpy because when it's on the wall in a frame it's not gonna matter. It's gonna be like a tapestry, you know, that's gonna be thick and beautiful and so I'm okay with that. This piece, realistically speaking, is probably never gonna get finished. Like, I just know that that's, it's gonna be a marathon piece. I'll be working on it when I'm 90, if I can still see, and I'm okay with that. Um, Cause it's more about the journey for me on some, on a lot of these big ones. So, I think that's all I wanted to say about that one. After that, I worked on Enchanted Alphabet by Lavender and Lace. This one I am working on 48, I think it's, I think it's technically 45 count, Graziano Linen by Lakeside Linens. It's in the color Smoky. I looked it up. Smoky Time, maybe, T-H-Y-M-E, something like that. I, I might, I'll put it, maybe put it on the screen. We'll see. I think it's something like that. It was a clearance cut on tra at Traditional Stitches. Traditional Stitches is a cal Canadian shop. Um, it was on clearance, and the cut was perfect for this piece, because this piece is really long and skinny, and I didn't want to... I wanted something green, but I didn't want something really expensive. And in order to get the whole thing on one piece, you need to get a big piece. 
and then like cut it in half lengthwise, you know? So they had this random cut that was just about perfect and it was a small count so the finished product won't be really, really wide. And since it's hand dyed, it's more like 48 count. <clears throat> I'm doing it one over one um, and oh, one over two, just kidding, one over two. So the individual X's are more like 25 count size, which is perfect, I think, for the coverage of the dark colors. So this is what it looked like last time. And here it is now. There we go. Those colors are pretty good. Um, I finished the N and the Dove. And I kind of had wished I'd been able to do more, but again, I ran out of time with my other commitments. The next color, I, the next letter I was hoping to do is the big L right here, but I didn't, I didn't get to that. I was, again, I worked on finishing up the back stitching on the Dove on the sixth day, and then I picked up my next piece on that same day, so I did two in the same day, because I'm like, I really want to finish the Dove before I put it away. I don't want to have something on, like, half finished when I put it away. So, <clears throat> that's how far I am on Enchanted Alphabet, and a few people have noticed, have commented on the variegation in the letters, and that is all charted. It is not a variegated floss, it's all DMC, and you stop and start with your different colors. It is charted color changes. So to clear that up for everybody, which originally I kind of thought it was a variegated look too when you just see the, the picture, but it's all charted. So um, I thought that was really clever and very well done. So um, it's really nice and you don't have to get any fancy floss. It's, it's all the colors I've already, I already had, so perfect. So I will be working more on that at a later date. I still really love it. The, t the stitches are really cute and the fabric is really cute. <laughs> so let's see, what did I do next? I think the next thing was three sisters. I'm trying to put this back. The tube I have for this is really tight. So there we go. Yep, then I went to three sisters which is a golden kite piece that I have. Um, and I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada and I have some parking in the corner and then cro extreme cross country for the first girl. I'm not doing extreme cross country over the whole piece, but um, just her, cause she's kind of fun to do that way. So here's what she looked like last time. And here's the top. Maybe I'll show you a picture of the top of the the top last time. And this is the top this time. I just got a little bit done here, not very much. I spent two days. The confetti in this area, man, the light is just annoying right now. I spent two days in this area and got like maybe one or two lines completed along with however far the rest of the threads went. So, so dense and, and confetti heavy. Um, but did a little bit. <laughs> and then I'll show you what the, sh the girl looked like last time. And here's what she looks like now. <clears throat> let's see, there we go. Um, that's pretty good. I picked a color and it's this, this peach color is a lot right in here. And there was a, some of it in her hair too and didn't get it done. So there's more of that color and I am not happy that I have left, have the rotation finished and I didn't finish a color because coming back to it, I wanna be able to just pick up a, whichever color. And I would have liked to have a light color and a dark color finished in one rotation. That didn't happen. So, what I'm thinking of doing, my next rotation, which actually should have started yesterday, um, I was gonna do Snow Queen as my priority fancy lady for the month, but I'm not really feeling her, and probably many reasons, but <clears throat> I decided not to work on her this month. I think, I, I think the big reason why I'm not feeling working on her is that I worked on her 
two months in a row already because she was my priority piece in January and I gave her a couple big days in February so because of the Olympics challenge so I kind of was like I'm not really feeling it so I actually made a new start which I'll share you with you in a minute so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I've been doing my new start in the car as my travel piece and then I starting yesterday I'm I was doing it in the car and at home and I think I'll be doing that until it's done because it's for a gift and then when it's done if I still have some more days left in this rotation I will go back to three sisters and try to finish that color at least at least that color in her face perhaps another color too because there's like the symbol I'm doing in her face is a is a an X like a plus sign not an X a plus sign <clears throat> that's a light plus sign and then there's a thick plus sign in that's a dark color in the highlights so it'd be kind of fun to do both plus signs but we'll see if I get at least the first plus sign done I'll be happy so because I don't think she's coming out again this this year either based on what I had already plugged in so it would be nice to get to a better stopping point before putting her away um, so you may see her again next time and not Snow Queen. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to work on Snow Queen after all. So <clears throat> I guess I will show you my travel piece that I worked on before my new start. So I worked on my castle, <clears throat> which is Bodium Castle. After I finished greetings from the park, I pulled this back out again to be my travel piece. Um, so you should see this, um, what it looked like last time. And here's where it is now. So I got a little bit done, you know, on this, these edges and started in on the water. Um, I decided this, this was originally charted for one over one on 18 count, which I think is too light of coverage for my taste. So I've been doing two over one on 18 count, except for the sky, which I did one over one. It's a kit, so I'm running out of colors for some of them. I decided to also do one over one in the water to make it feel a little bit more airy and not airy, but like a reflection, you know, where it's kind of not, um, not crisp, you know, it's kind of light and, um, as in a mirror dimly, you know? So the colors that are down here in the in the moat area are gonna be one over one also. And then like, there's gonna be a lot of greenery and some ducks down here. To tell you the truth, I'm not looking forward to this section because it's a hand-drawn chart with backstitching lines like crisscrossing all over it down there on the bottom and <sighs> Trying to read it is kind of a nightmare, but <clears throat> it is going to be cute and it goes pretty fast. So I am looking forward to finishing it someday soonish. Although now if I get those charts from Shelly, you know, I may not have as much time in the car for that one. But I'm, we're going to be visiting um, my, my grandma in a little, in a little while here. And right like a couple days after her birthday and I haven't seen her in five years <clears throat> since my daughter was a baby so since it's close to her birthday and it's a rare visit um, I kept wondering what like I wanted to do something nice for to give her a birthday present and I felt like making her something and I wasn't sure I should especially with all those rug all the rugs I had to do but it eventually just, you know what, I need to do something. And I will actually credit Jesse Marie <laughs> for this new start, even though it's not the same thing she's working on. But everybody, everybody has been working on the Farmhouse Christmas series. And uh, Country Cottage Needleworks, Little House Needleworks, one of those ones. The first one in... <sighs> I have to go. <laughs> I will finish this later. All right, I'm back now, 
and I've picked up my kids, had a little bit of lunch, and now they're in the other room watching a show. So spring break has officially started, <laughs> for my boys at least, they're off for two weeks. Um, so it's going to be crazy up in here for a while. Um, I was talking about Farmhouse Christmas. They're the little, little series that a lot of people are doing, and the very first one has like two little sheep and a barn, and it's wintry, you know, because it's a Christmas one. And Jessie Marie showed it on her three hour video re <laughs> recently. Hi, Kitty, you want to come over? Hello. Come on up. <clears throat> so Jessie showed it that she got it recently because I had seen other people working on it and it was cute but not really my thing and decided that, well, it's, it's, for some reason when she showed it, it just like hit me. My grandma would love that. So um, I thought, well, maybe I could make it not so Christmassy, make it grass instead of snow and, you know, whatnot, make it not a ho holiday themed one, just something that would be generic. She, she has a barn on her property and she likes to spin wool and knit and all that. So I'm like, that could be cute. So I went looking at it and I noticed it has like a snowflake or something on the, on the roof of the barn, which if you take it out, might be too boring um, of a pattern. So I thought, well, Maybe I'll look and see what else I can find that's kind of similarly themed. And I've discovered <clears throat> this Jardin Privé pattern called Histories de Moutons, which is sheep stories. And it's part of a series. There's This is the fourth one. There's three, there's four of them and they all can combine to be a big collage of patterns and this is the one that interested me because it has the lady spinning wool and all the sheep and, you know, the rest of it was just a cute scene. And I thought, you know what? That's really cute. My grandma would enjoy that. I can make that for her. I wasn't sure if she would want something, you know, hung up on the wall. And I thought, eventually I, I discovered, at talking with my mom and kind of back and forth with her and, and then the thoughts just kept whirling that I decided to make this, change the colors to fit my grandma's aesthetic a little bit better and I'll FFO it into a tote bag because <clears throat> she loves tote bags. So rather than frame it and hang it on the wall or while we're there visiting, well, I'll sew it up into a tote bag and gift her that and then she can use it um, for, you know, holding her knitting projects or just whatever she wants to use it for. So I decided to change the colors of everything almost. So I'm keeping two, it's charted in DMC. I'm keeping two of the DMC colors, but one of the ones I'm changing is <clears throat> I'm using for a different symbol. So like there's only one thing I'm not changing. <laughs> I'm not recharting the design at all, I'm just changing colors. So I'm using light blue 14 count Ada, which is actually the same Ada that I got, um, that I'm using for Snow Queen. And I actually purchased Kitty, <laughs> she she just bumped the iPad. Um, <clears throat> this, I think my grandma gave me this Ada because when she was getting rid of her cross stitching stash. So I thought, well, that's appropriate. I know she likes it. So I'm using another piece of this Ada, which was a perfect size. It's 14 count, which means it's this X's will be nice and big. She'll be able to see the design really clearly because um, she is getting older. And this is how far I have gotten. And I love how this is turning out. It's really cute and it's really fast to stitch. Ow, she's scratching me now. So, um... I have decided to change the colors to be more blues and greens, less a little bit le little bit less primitive, and to utilize the fancy floss that I have been collecting. So, um, I have been use doing this as a stitch uh, travel stitching until yesterday, when I'm also going to be doing using it um, at home 
until it's finished because I'm almost done. I've got the, the scene with the lady spinning wool and then the these are the tops of the flowers of the little picket fence down here. So this green is Eat Your Greens by Color and Cotton. And the darker brown here is Quarter Horse by Color and Cotton. This roof and the dark bits on the sheep and her hair, that's all Old Salem Spell by Victorian Motto. This house is Mermaid's Dream by Color and Cotton. The white I'm using is Grits by Weeks Dye Works. This gold is Antique Gold by Color and Cotton. This dress is Big Blue by Color and Cotton. This pink is what should have been the house color, I believe. And I made it the what this should have been like a dark pink, like a dark burgundy color, and um, and these flowers. And I decided to change the, them to the color that should have been the house. So that's all the bits of that pink that there will be. Her face is the other one that's plain DMC. I'm not changing. Um, the I think that's all the colors. I think I've been through all the colors. Oh, toasted barley. This sheep is toasted barley, and there's a basket down here where her wool is staying, and that's also toasted barley from General Art, I believe. The doorknob was supposed to be toasted barley. I thought it would contrast fine, but it turned out it um, blended in too much, so I ended up making that Old Salem spell, the doorknob. And I actually backstitched around it, just like the Frosted Pumpkin eyeballs, to make sure that it stood out enough for my taste. So that turned out okay. Oh, and the green, there's supposed to be two different greens charted, but Eat Your Greens is very variegated. So I went ahead and just used one, just Eat Your Greens for both colors of charted symbols and let the variegation do the talking and then I'd had less fiddly starting and stopping to do. So win-win. <clears throat> so that's going really, really well. I'm really happy with it. I should be able to finish this in the next couple days. This is the main fabric I'm going to use to like make the tote bag outer shell. And then I'm going to use this as like a lining fabric. So that's kind of the plan. So I will try to make a video next week when this is finished and FFO'd for you because I will be gifting it to her before I'll get a chance to make another another video. Um, if I don't get a chance to make a video because I have got too many children around, then I will at least take pictures. So you will be seeing that next time. So I'm having a lot of fun on that. But yes, I'm gonna credit Jessie Marie because the light bulb moment hit me when she shared her purchase of hometown holidays and then it kind of you know went down the rabbit hole and made up my plans from that starting point because before then I was kind of hemming and hawing about whether or not I should consider making her something or and then as soon as I saw that I'm like I need to make her that because that's simple and small and something I could do fairly quickly without overwhelming myself so and then I ended up with this pattern, which is bigger than the hometown holidays, but not, still not overwhelming for a small project. So, <clears throat> plans. All right, going forward, as I said, it's spring break now. Um, my, the rug, rug thing is finished, so that's off my plate, but all the kids are home, so it tends to get a little bit, well, not all the kids. My daughter still has some preschool left next week, but. Um, it's going to be different the next few weeks, so you won't probably won't see me for three weeks, but, um, my plan is to finish that Jardin Privé for my grandma, get that sewn up into a tote bag, and then if I still have some more time before early next week, I'm going to go back to three sisters and see if I can finish the symbol that I was working on in her face. The, this, that's this 754, which is actually 
the one color that I need, the DMC for the face of the the spinning woman on my grandma's piece. So I, I went right after I paused the video to go pick up my kids. I was going to start the lady, and the very next color I was going to use was 754. But that happened to be the one color <laughs> that I had out for my three sisters piece, so it wasn't in my travel bag. I'm like, oh, of course. So I just worked on her dress instead, so that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so I'll go back and see if I can get three sisters at a good stopping point. Then I want to work on furry animals, which is my priority piece for full coverage. Trying to get it finished this year. And I didn't get this out. I didn't pull it out just now, but it's back here. Um, you've seen it. I showed it last time, I think. Because I think I shared all my March plans last time, even though I didn't really need to. So this is Furry Animals Freebie. I'm just trying to finish it because it's a tiny one and I don't want it hanging over my head. I want it done and it should be fairly quick because it's like less than two pages. And this is where I'm at and I'm going to go abandon the diagonal columns because I'm using half stitches and I found I didn't like how that looked with it had diagonal ridges it felt like to me. So I'm going to go back to columns. Um, moving forward with this one. So hopefully next week I'll get some work done on this. And then going into April, I'm going to pull back out Storytime Sampler and work on The Wizard of Oz, that next little block there. And um, then I'm going to bring, and then I'm going to work on Teacher's Job by Jodery Designs because I believe Teacher Appreciation Week for preschool is either the end of April or the beginning of May. So, where did I put that one? That one's over here. I have a small start on this and I'm going to use all color and cotton for this one. Or, I might have some dental arts in here too. But I'm using Fancy Floss, not what's charted. And this is kind of, yeah, it's all color and cotton. It's kind of charted intentionally for you to play with the colors, which is kind of nice. Um, I forget. Yeah, this is a small design, it says on the key. Perfect for using up leftover threads in whichever colors you choose. You will only need a single skein of each color. So that's kind of nice. They, they're, they, they intend for it to be a make-it-your-own kind of piece. So I'll be working on this for my daughter's preschool teacher. I have one little stick started in Quarter Horse, which is a beautiful brown by Color and Cotton. This is eight, Antique White 18 Count Ada. So I'll be doing that when my Storytime Sampler is finished, the uh, April block of Wizard of Oz. When that's finished, I'll do, work on this. I'll work on my castle some more. And I think... I may work on some, I may start a, one of the Country Cottage Needleworks month, month things, if I get those from Shelly in the next little bit, um, on that gray Monaco I talked about. So that's a possibility for something to start soon. <clears throat> but until I see you then, I think that's what I'll be working on. So look forward to that. And I think that's all I have to share with you right now. I wasn't sure if I should say anything, but I guess I, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. I keep wanting to tell you. So like two videos ago, I noticed I had passed 2,000 subscribers, which is amazing. I I don't know. I, there's nothing special about me. Um, I just like to share my stitching. I probably talk too much about it. And it's just fun to share it with people who get me, um, who care about all the little details about cross stitching because you're as addicted to it as I am. And, like, my family enjoys crafting, and some of them cross-stitch a little bit, but it's not to the same degree that I love it. So <laughs> it's just fun to have some an outlet to share that with people who really care. So I'm really thankful for all of you, and I want to do a giveaway, but when I noticed that I had just passed 2,000 subscribers, I was in the throes of all that, the colonial rug business, and I was just not... No, I can't think about that right now. So 
it's something special is coming. Um, I won't say what it is, but I want to tell you I am aware of the number and I am thinking about something special to do for you guys. Um, but I don't want to say what it is until I've, you know, finalized things. So, um, just in case I change my mind, reserve the right to do that. Oh, and I told, um, Kate at Kate's Crafting Corner that I'm going to tell you guys, I reserve the right to change my plans. Um, because it's, I feel like I make these grand plans and a lot of you like the planning aspect of my videos and I enjoy making plans, but I always feel like as soon as I make plans, something comes along that makes me want to change them. Either somebody else's suggestion or my, the season of life that happens to be right now and, or the priorities of the pieces that I'm working on. Something, something always throws a wrench in whatever I, I've planned and then I feel like I need to change them again and I feel like I'm disappointing everybody when I change plans, but I think you all get it. <laughs> you all understand how that works. So I will make plans and they will maybe come to pass. They will maybe not. And whatever I work on will be enjoyable and I will share with you. And you'll just probably see a lot of plans and a lot of changed plans. And that's just the way it's going to be. So um, I think that's it. So until next time. Happy stitching. Bye.